Hello everyone and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the essential components of bonds and gain a better understanding how bonds are traded. So the first thing we look at is the pieces. What constitute a bonds? When a company issues bonds, it specifies some key details that you need to be familiar with. Basically, the basic components of a bond. The first one is the issue date. When is this bond being issued? Two, what is the maturity date? When does this bond mature? Three, it's par value or face value or maturity value. They all mean the same thing. Simply put, the face par value or the maturity value is the amount listed on the bond. Think of a dollar amount or a $100 bill. The $100 is the face value of that bill. The company should also specify the contract rate or the coupon rate or the offering rate. Those are the same thing. So these details form the foundation of the bond issuance process. Also, what we need to be familiar with, another term when it comes to bond, is something called bond indenture. It's an agreement between the issuer and the bondholder. Just simply put, the agreement is called bond indenture. It outlines the terms and the conditions of the bond. When am I going to pay you the interest rate? Uh, when does the bond mature? What happened in case of default? Ensuring the rights and obligation of both parties that are clearly spelled out. Remember, it's a contract. Bond indenture is that agreement. It's the contract between the lender and the borrower. Also, we will discuss briefly for bondholders the proof of ownership. Now, the proof of ownership could be in a form of a bond certificate. Could be. Or it could be just a computer entry somewhere. These days, when you have a bond, it's a computer entry somewhere, unless you specify you want to hold, you have to have the bond certificate in your hand. And finally, we will discuss tradings of bonds. Now, this session is important because it sets the foundation, it sets the pieces. What, what constitute a bond? What are the elements of a bond? So make sure you understand this. Then we will move on to issuing bond at par, discount, and premium. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Hello, my name is Farhat. You are here because you are either an accounting student, a finance student, or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help, and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, FarhatLectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website. Give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Let's take a look at the pieces of bonds payable. Bonds payable is a long-term debt on the balance sheet and the bonds payable itself includes the following components. So if you're looking at a bonds payable, you would see you need to be familiar with the following components. The first one is the face value of the bond, sometimes called the par value, some call, sometimes called the principal amount. It's the same thing. Now, what is the face value of a bond? Well, let's take a look at a $100 bill. If you look at this bill, if you inspect this bill, how do you know it's a $100 bill? It's printed on it, $100, $100 Federal Reserve Note. So this is the bond, the same concept as the bond. The bond will have an actual face value, and I will show you a bond, a sample bond on the next page. This, the amount that's the issuing company agrees to pay to the bondholders at maturity. So when you bring back, you, when you bring back the bond, the company will pay you the face value, the par value, the principal amount. Now, this amount is paid at maturity. What's maturity? Maturity is the when the bond mature, when the debt is over. 
It's the principal amount that must be paid back at the end of bond's life. So once the bond matured, there's a maturity date, we'll discuss shortly, you'll have to, the company will have to pay back the face value of that bond, whatever that face value is. Also on the bond itself, there is a coupon rate. Sometimes the coupon rate is called the stated rate. Sometimes it's called the contract rate. Sometimes it's called the printed rate. And I made this printed rate out to emphasize the point that this rate, the coupon rate is printed, is permanent on the bond. It does not change. So this is the annual interest rate paid on the bond's face value. Now, when the company wants to borrow money, let's assume they want to borrow a million dollars. That's the face value of the bond. They have to tell you they are they are going to pay 8%. This is the coupon rate. The coupon rate is the rate that they want to pay you. This interest is usually paid either semi-annually or annually. So they might pay you, if it's semi-annually, 4% every four months, or they might pay you annually 8%. This interest rate will determine the cash amount paid by the company. So assuming this bond pays interest annually, we'll take $1 million, assuming it's annually, times 8%, 8%, and the company will pay once a year $80,000. So this is the cash amount. Now, this is, will be different than the interest expense. We will discuss this later. So the cash amount does not have to be the same as the interest expense. Sometime it will be. Oftentimes it's not. But we will discuss this topic later. So the coupon rate, the stated rate, or the contract rate, it does not change. Once the company issued this bond, it is fixed. Now, there's an issue date. For example, the, the issue date is 1-1-2026. This is when the bond is issued. Then there is a maturity date when the bond matures. Well, this could be five years, 10 years, the date on which the bond face value must be repaid. Remember we talked about the face value? This is where the company will need to pay back a million dollars to the bond holder. Bonds can have varying maturity date ranging from short term, a few years to a long term, 30 years plus. So those are basically the major component of a bond's payable. Not the only one, but the major one that we need to be familiar with. Now let's take a look at an actual bond to see how the bond, what the bond would look like. So for example, this bond is due, this is the maturity date. You remember we talked about the maturity date? The, it's due 2007. This is the maturity date. It was issued it was issued July 27, 1977. This is the issue date. And this is a one bond. This is one single bond. Why? Because it's a $1,000. How, how do I know it's a one single bond? Because bonds, bonds come in $1,000 denomination. And it's paying, this is the stated rate or the coupon rate. Coupon rate. This is 8 and three-eighths of a percent, and the company is the Standard Oil Company, an Ohio corporation. It's an 8% bond, 88 .8 and three-eighths to 2007. So those are the pieces. Now, once a bond is issued, once a bond is sold, now, from 1977 till 2007, that's a lot of years. What's going to happen is this. The bond will be traded from one hand to the other hand. So I purchased the bond initially. Well, this bond, I was a month old when it was issued. But let's assume I purchased it initially. Then in 1980, I sold it. 1981, I, I, whoever bought it from me sold it again. So the bonds can change hands many, many times over the life of the bond. It means the, the person that purchased the bond initially is not the person that comes back in 2007, July 27th, 2007, and ask for the $1,000. Whoever holds this bond will, will, will get the $1,000, but the bond will trade, and there's a market price that the bond trade at. Now, this is important. This is important. This is the market price of a bond, and there's an important information we need to discuss here. The price, 
at which the bond is currently trading is the market rate, which could be above or below the face value. Remember the bond we are dealing with is, is one bond and it's a thousand dollar. What could happen over the years? Remember this bond is paying eight and three eight of a percent. This is this is the bond that was issued in 1977, July 27. When the bond was issued, I'm gonna tell you something. When this bond is, is issued, I'm gonna tell you that the market rate, the market rate was eight and three eighth. What is the market rate? This is a new term. The market rate is what other bonds are traded at. So when this company sold the bond, they offered eight and three eighth of a percent. They offered this interest rate and everyone else, everybody else, similar to the standard oil company also offered eight and three eighth. So the company issued the bond, they got the thousand dollar. The bond was issued, we say at at par or at face value and this is important because the next thing we're going to look at is bond issued at par or bond issued at face value now let's assume in 19 and whoever carried this bond in 1980 they decided to buy it in 1980, interest rate jumped to 12%. Now, if somebody would like to buy a bond, similar bond to the standard oil is paying 12%. How much is the standard oil bond is, is, is paying? 8 and 3 eighth. What does that mean? The value of the standard oil bond will go down why because no one would like to buy your bond because they can go somewhere else and earn 12 percent so your bond will sell at a discount below the face value now let's assume in 1980 we're going to change the scenario interest rate the market rate went down to six percent guess what you carry a bond the standard oil paying eight and three eighth and similar companies to this to those bonds in 1980 are trading at 6%. What happened to your bond? Your bond trades above the par value. We say the bond trades at a premium. Very important. Now this bond is a thousand dollar bond. What we just did is very important. Make sure you know it. Typically bonds they come in one thousand or five thousand dollar denomination. This, this happens to be a thousand for our purposes we will always deal with a thousand but make sure in the real world you know there are five thousand dollar bonds after being issued bonds frequently traded among investors meaning they may change hands multiple times before they mature and we, when they change hands whoever buys them they might buy them at a premium they might buy them at a discount depending on the ongoing interest rate now the market value of a price of a bond is expressed now this is important as a percentage of its face value for example if this bond in 1980 what we said it's trading at 104 what does that mean it's trading at 104 percent times face value times par value this is a thousand dollar bond so if we take 1000 times 1.04 which is 104 percent the price of this bond is trading at 1040 dollars this bond we say is selling at a premium also if we say this bond is trading at 98 percent it means if you want to sell this bond or if you want to buy this bond you can buy it or sell it at 980 which is $1,000 times 0.98 or 98 percent this bond we say is selling at a discount anything below 1,000 is a discount anything above 1,000 I'm sorry anything below 100 is a discount because 100 percent is exactly if we say the bond is selling at par if we take 100 percent times a thousand which is one times a thousand will give us a bond of a thousand dollar let's see how the bond are actually traded in this example we're looking at a Microsoft bond trading at 98.5 of its par value what does that mean this is the price 98.5 it means this this bond can be sold or bought for 900 now there's sometimes there's a difference in buying and selling but 
uh, it's bid and ask but you don't, we don't have to worry about this for 985 let's read this data about the bond for example when we say the rate it means this bond is paying this is the coupon rate so this bond is paying five percent that's the coupon rate MAT is the maturity date this bond matured the year 2035 this is the maturity date yield yield rate is how much if you buy this bond at $985 you would earn 4.75 don't worry about the yield rate this is how much you will earn if you carry this bond from this time till it matures but don't worry about this uh, volume is how many bonds were traded that day the volume is 200 and thousands uh, 200 bonds times a thousand dollar this is the volume and the closing price is what we started with 98.5 this is the price it's 98.5 percent or 0.985 and from the prior day it went down the price of this bond went down half a percent so the prior day if you want to buy this bond it was traded at exactly 99 percent it went down now 0.5 and now it's traded as 0.98 985 now what should you do you want to go to Farhat lectures look at additional MCQs additional resources that's going to help you understand this bond chapter we are building your knowledge to start to issue bonds in the next session I'm gonna I am going to issue actual bonds and the first example I am going to do I'm gonna issue bonds at par it means the bond when the bond sells at exactly 100% at exactly 100% stay motivated stay motivated that's all what I can tell you bonds are challenging but if you pick up those pieces pieces by pieces and you put them together because there are a lot, lot of moving pieces you will be fine